Thanks so much to all of you for uh, coming and hearing my presentation, and uh, also to Mary Angela for inviting me to present today. Um, this is Thriving at Home on Entro and Parenteral Nutrition. Thank you. Uh, piece of cake, and um, I don't know how many of you may be at home on Entro and Parenteral Nutrition and maybe felt like this when you were first faced with that, or maybe as clinicians and um, seeing your patients um, and the look on their face. But what I'm hoping is that over the next few minutes, um, I can share with you some information about supplies and equipment and treatment strategies um, to help people to really live life on nutrition support. Um, this person here, this gentleman, is Rick Davis. He's the president of the Oli Foundation. and. Um, I think they have a table outside there, but the OLE is really dedicated to uh, patients who are at home on enteral and parenteral nutrition and uh, through support, education, and research. And Ed, uh, Rick, sorry, really um, epitomizes that living life at, on nutrition support. And that's him, he says, taking a drink at the Grand Canyon through his enteral feeding tube. Uh, these statistics here came from the Oli Foundation Registry um, that actually was disbanded in the early 90s. But at that time, you can see that there were about 40,000 people at home um, in the US on uh, parental nutrition, and about 150,000 home on enteral. Uh, since that time, we feel that the parental numbers are probably more or less the same, although the enteral numbers have increased significantly with uh, technology involved with tube placement, um, administration of feedings, and also just the recognition that enteral nutrition is really the um, best way from um, a digestion and um, metabolic standpoint uh, to be nourished. Uh, there's a certain criteria that we feel um, help to make a successful uh, discharge home or initiation at home on home parental and enteral nutrition, and that's what that HPEN stands for, home parental and enteral nutrition. Um, but obviously, we want to be sure that um, we have good IV or GI access. And I know Dr. Pasquale tomorrow is going to talk a little bit more about uh, enteral access. We also like to know that the patient is somewhat clinically stable. And uh, some of the things that we're looking for are good blood sugar control, electrolyte control, um, and also fluid management. Um, also, that the home environment is safe and clean, um, and that patients and caregivers both are committed to the therapy. It's not an easy thing to do, um, and it really takes patience and commitment. Um, and from someone who's done a lot of patient teaching myself, it's not uncommon to uh, present to the patient who's anxious to go home and they're really willing to bend over backwards and do anything, but then the caregiver comes in the room and is like, you got to be kidding me, I'm not doing this. So um, really everybody needs to be on the same page and make sure that they're committed to really um, doing the therapy at home. 